Welcome back to History on a Hop. I'm Captain Boss. I've been looking into the phenomenon of UFO encounters and alien abduction incidents. It's a subject that has always fascinated me. The recent Pentagon disclosure of U.S. Navy fighter aircraft encounters with UFOs has only added fuel to the fire in my fascination. And it got me thinking to one of the most famous UFO encounter and alien abduction cases in recent history, the Betty and Barney Hill UFO abduction case near Franconia Notch in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. As we saw in part two, Betty and Barney Hill were returning to Portsmouth, New Hampshire after a short vacation in Montreal, Canada in September of 1961. As they drove in the middle of the night along the dark and narrow road through the heavily forested Franconia Notch, they claimed that they had been followed and eventually stopped by a large UFO in the middle of the road. They then would sensationally claim that they had been forced into the UFO by bipedal aliens and then subjected to medical experiments before eventually being released. They would have no memory of the abduction until after they returned home several weeks later. This case would be significant in the annals of UFO encounters because they would be the first people who claimed to have been abducted by extraterrestrials. And here's the location where the supposed initial UFO encounter took place, here along US Route 3, just north of Lincoln, New Hampshire. As you can see, the state of New Hampshire has erected an historical marker to commemorate this event, which lends credence to the Hill's claim that the UFO encounter took place. Today, Route 3 is a very busy road with thousands of tourists transiting through the area to visit the White Mountain National Park. But this was not the case in 1961. This entire stretch of Route 3 was very rural and isolated. It was the perfect place for an encounter with a UFO. So, picking up their story where we left off in part two, Betty and Barney had just pulled off the road to view this strange flying saucer that was blocking the road. The huge silent craft hovered approximately 80 to 100 feet above the hill's 1957 Chevrolet Bel Air, and it filled the entire field of view. It reminded Barney of a huge pancake. While observing the hovering craft, Barney grabs his binoculars to view the object up close. It had windows along the center line, and behind the windows, he claimed there were humanoid creatures looking right back at him. Barney said that he saw between 8 to 11 humanoid figures who were peering out of the craft's windows, staring at both of them. In unison, all but one figure moved to what appeared to be an instrument panel on the rear wall of the craft's observation deck. The one remaining figure continued to look at Barney and then telepathically communicated a message to him, telling him to stay where you are. Barney would also remember that the humanoid forms were wearing some sort of glossy black uniforms. Red lights on what appeared to be the bat wing fins on the sides of the craft began to telescope out towards them and a long structure descended from the bottom of the UFO. Terrified, Barney tore the binoculars away from his eyes and sprinted back to his car. In a near hysterical state, he told Betty, they're going to capture us. He then leaps into his car and roars off. But then for some reason, he turns off the main road and heads down a side road, where five of these humanoids are standing on the road, waiting for them. Almost immediately, the Hills heard a rhythmic series of beeping or buzzing sounds, which they said seemed to bounce off their vehicle. The car vibrated. 
and a tingling sensation passed through their bodies. The Hills then said it was then that they experienced the onset of an altered state of consciousness and they felt their minds dulled and they claimed to have entered into some sort of trance. A large group of aliens then appeared from their ship, and in unison, the aliens moved towards them, surrounding them both. And then, they were easily led into the UFO. The Hills claimed that they were unable to put up any kind of resistance. Upon entering the UFO, Betty said the interior of the ship was very futuristic, but that it was very dark and she couldn't make out anything specific. They were then led to, in Betty's description, a medical examination room and were forced to lie down on examination tables. The aliens then disrobed them both and then they were both physically examined. They said the aliens took some skin scrapings and then used needles to penetrate their eyes, ears and belly buttons. And then, of course, they would be the first humans to report that they were also subjected to the dreaded anal probe. Betty said she screamed during the entire process. One of the humanoids was able to communicate with Betty, again telepathically, and told her they meant her no harm, and she believed the alien examiner and calmed down. After the examination, she asked one of the aliens where they were from, in response, the alien activated some sort of instrument and a three-dimensional map popped open in thin air in the middle of the room surrounding them, similar to a hologram, a la Star Trek. The celestial map displayed various sized dots and lines on it, but she had no clue what they meant. The alien points at the hologram and stated they were from the Zeta Reticuli star system. After several hours in the alien spacecraft being probed and analyzed, Betty and Barney are returned unharmed back to their car. They are told they will forget everything about the abduction. As they sit in their car, they notice the UFO ship rise and then hurtle out of sight. The couple then start their car routinely and then continue their journey home, oblivious of the entire incident and their abduction. But this is not the end of the story. Arriving home at about dawn, the Hills realized they couldn't remember the drive home, losing all memory for nearly two hours that night. They also stated they had had some strange sensations and impulses, and they could not readily explain what happened to some of their clothes and their personal items. Betty's dress was suspiciously ripped, and she didn't remember tearing it. Barney's shoes were badly scraped, and he doesn't remember how that happened. He normally keeps his shoes highly shined. Both of their watches stopped at precisely the same time. Those watches would never work again. Find out the rest of their story when you return for part four. The Hills would continue to have strange feelings for weeks and months after their drive back from Montreal, but they couldn't remember what had happened to them. However, they began to realize that something strange and awful had taken place. But what? Find out what happens to them when they reach out to a church friend and tell them of their lost time feeling, and how this discussion would eventually lead them to Project Blue Book. Next time on History on a Hawk.